What's up you guys, it is Jack, back filming another video for you guys. So, this video is going to be a story time video about um, a very disconcerting, creepy, weird experience I had using a ride sharing service. I mention the name of the company in the title of this video, but for the sake of not being sued, I'm not gonna actually say their name in this video because I can always change the title if I need to, but I don't wanna have to re-upload and re-edit this video. So, I will not mention their name, clearly it's in the title, but yeah, I was using a ride sharing service, there was a driver driving me home after a date, and this story time actually happened and I just needed to tell it, okay? It involves being gay, it involves religion, it involves obviously a driver being very weird. So if you're interested, then stick around and let's get into it, guys. Alrighty, you guys, so, um, like I said at the beginning of the video, I went on a date. It was a fine time with a fine young gentleman caller, and it was a good experience. I'm not gonna go into details about it, but the date ended at around 1.30 in the morning. No, we didn't have sex. No, we did not hook up. Uh, we just played Mario Kart and drank. That's it. So, the date ended, and I do not have a car in LA. So I went on my phone, opened the app in order to ride, and eventually it showed up like 15 minutes later. My date was outside with me. I said goodbye to him. I just hugged him. Uh, we didn't make out. We didn't kiss or anything like that. It's not like we screamed gay couple on a date. So, um, the driver who showed up was a woman. I was never sure if she realized I was gay or not, or she saw me and this boy and assumed we were gay and on a date. But regardless, whenever I get into a car at 2 a.m., this is pretty much what I do. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Jack, nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I'm going. Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. listening to music, I like to look out the window, I want to see all the beautiful sights. This was Hollywood, so I was looking at, um, you know, the garbage on the side of the road. I was looking at, oh, what a nice uh, pile of human waste on the sidewalk over there. That's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to listen to music, I wanted to unwind, I wanted to look out the window. But she had other plans, she wanted to talk, okay? Which you guys, in all seriousness, I would never not talk to my driver, you know what I mean? I like to be cordial, I don't sit in the back seat with my big sunglasses on and my feather boa around my neck and act like I'm being chauffeured. Also, it was like 2 a.m. I didn't want the poor woman to fall asleep at the wheel, so I was having a conversation with her and she really, she was a kooky woman, like a kooky older woman, probably around 55. We started talking about airplanes and she was telling me that every single time she goes on one, she just prays to God that it will land safely and when it does, she goes, oh, thank you God, thank you, God is great, God is good. We also talked about how she's a night owl. Hello, I'm also a night owl, I can relate to that. You guys know that if you follow me on Twitter, I'm tweeting out the most random ass shit at 4 a.m. I'll be like, I love Frozen at 4 a.m., just like random shit, I can never sleep. So, I too am a night owl and I explained that to her and um, this is where things got a little like, like, okay, like, let's talk about Sage. She started telling me that I should sage my apartment, which, you guys, I'm gonna be entirely honest, that is a Capricorn. Yeah. There are certain things that I cannot wrap my small Capricorn mind around, and saging and spirits is one thing. I've just never really believed in it. I'm not saying you're it's not true. It's just I am logical in a sense that I believe in what I could see. But anyway, she was telling me that I need to sage my apartment every single night before going to bed. Which, you guys, I can get on board with calming candles, calming scents, some melatonin. Sage, though? Uh, again, I can't wrap my Capricorn mind around it. But then, she started talking about LA and energy and the negative toxic energies that surround us. And, you guys, I, I don't not believe in energy, okay? But, I it's not typically a conversation I have with strangers. I'm not, like... Wow, hi, nice to meet you, I'm Jack. Girl, this negative energy, cut, am I right? Like, haha, like it's not what I do, okay? But I can get on board that LA is a little bit toxic, okay? And there might be negative things, like there's obviously murder, obviously drug addiction, stuff like that, okay? So I just wrote all this stuff off as kind of quirky and kooky, but uh, things got a little bit weirder 
again. And I'm being 100% honest here. I know some people don't believe in story time videos. I cannot be any more honest with you guys. I am not exaggerating this. This is practically verbatim. She made eye contact with me in the rearview mirror and went, I, you seem open-minded. I have something to tell you, okay? Because God's watching over us right now and he's telling me to tell you this. And I was sitting there and I was like, Girl, I just want to listen to My Chemical Romance. I don't, what are you, are you, is, it, where, is there a burning bush? Is this going to be a Ten Commandments? Like, what is happening here? So again, she made eye contact with me in the mirror and said, Everyone can find Jesus. I just want you to know that. It is never too late. Everyone can find the Lord. And I was like, who's a what now? Like, okay, I, all right. You know, thank you for letting me know that. I was kind of, I wasn't playing along and egging her on, but I wasn't disagreeing. I was like, oh, I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Because I, I didn't know what her motives were. In that moment, I was like, does she know I'm gay? Is that why she's telling me this? But I thanked her and then this is where things got even weirder. She looked at me again and she went, and I want you to tell something to all your friends and all your family, everybody that you know. I want you to let them know never to have sex in front of mirrors, never sleep in front of a mirror, which, um, shout out this big ass mirror that I sleep in front of every single night, but I also like having sex in front of a mirror, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, she was explaining that mirrors are, and this is verbatim, the gateway to hell. Then she gave me three Instagram handles to follow, which, you guys, I didn't follow them, obviously. I want to follow Ansel Elgort on Instagram. I want to follow Jordan Fisher on Instagram. I don't want to follow what it was like. The devil is in Euphoria Strip Club or whatever the app was. Obviously that wasn't the app, but she was telling me not to go to the strip club called Euphoria in LA. She explained that there was picture proof on her three Instagrams that the devil had possessed everyone in that strip club. Apparently the devil came out of the mirror in one of the dressing rooms and possessed one of the girls and there's a picture on her Instagram of that girl smoking a blunt in the club and blowing out the smoke and the devil's face is in the smoke. And I'll be honest, I did look at that picture of that girl blowing the smoke. All I saw was fucking smoke, that's it. You know, maybe I... But maybe I need to go to the eye doctor. I don't know. Maybe I need to get reading glasses. All that I could see was smoke though. But additionally on those Instagrams, it was a bunch of like, I'll put up a screenshot. If I don't even know if the Instagrams are still up. She said they're constantly being taken down. But if there is a screenshot that I can grab, it was just pictures like this constantly being like the devil has possessed everyone. We need to get them exorcisms. Also these posts are riddled with spelling and grammar errors. But again, that is neither here nor there. But anyway, we then stopped talking for a second or two because she missed the exit that she was supposed to take. Um, but she started talking to me again, and this is where I was getting, like, actually freaked out for my well-being, my safety, because you guys have to keep in mind, this was in LA at night, 2 a.m. We were driving, what, 60 miles per hour on, like, empty five-lane highways. It was so late, I had no one to text, no one to call. It wasn't like I could call my friend and be like, oh, hey, like, what's up? Like, distract me and talk to me so I don't have to have this conversation. But anyway, she started telling me about how everyone is trying to silence her and people are trying to take down her Instagram. Um, she's involved in some court case, and she said, again, this is verbatim, she said, the county courthouse is the house of the devil, and everyone who works inside of it is a demon and that she's being screwed out of money or something like that but no one will hear her out and what was unnerving about it was as she was explaining this she was getting mad and getting riled up and she was cursing and her voice was getting like louder and louder and she seemed like visibly distressed by it and I was just like like, let's not, like, drive into a tree here. Like, let's keep our eyes on the road. Like, oh, like, we're, uh, we're supposed to turn in two miles, just so you know. So, yeah, she was telling me the story and getting madder and angrier. And the entire time, I was like, I was just keeping my eyes on the road. I was looking at the GPS. I was counting down the time in my head. I was like, okay, four minutes away, three minutes away, two minutes away. I just wanted to be just done with the conversation. I... I wanted to, you know, be on solid ground again. I wanted to be moving zero miles per hour. I wanted to be alone. And eventually she pulled up to my apartment and she turned around and looked at me and just like that, went back to being just like this warm, kind, like motherly maternal person. And she turned on the light of the car and she was like, oh my God, let me get a good look at you. You're so handsome. Oh wow, it was such a pleasure driving you. You are so handsome. And I was sitting there like, 
I mean, girl, if you're gonna call me handsome, we can go for another lap around the block. But no, anyway, it was very sweet of her to say that. And then she asked me what I do for a living. I lied. I didn't want to tell her I have a YouTube channel because I didn't want her to look it up. I didn't want to open that door where she can follow my life or anything like that. So I told her I was unemployed, looking for work. Eventually I said goodbye to her and I left. Um, and as I was leaving, I went through the gate into my apartment complex and she honked the horn and I was like, maybe it's an accident, just keep walking. But she honked it again and I was like, turned around. You guys, honestly, I just wanted to be done with the conversation. And I'm not a psychiatrist over here. I, I can't diagnose somebody, but you guys, mental illness is something that like kind of hits home for me just because I've had friends who suffered deeply from it. Um, and I'm not talking about just depression. I'm talking about like full on psychosis where I've seen psychotic episodes. I've seen people talking to people who aren't there or being very paranoid. And this woman just kind of fit the bill for that. And from what I've experienced, I'm not trying to add to the stigma of mental illness, but mental illness can be super unpredictable. And again, I'm not even saying she had a mental illness. I'm not qualified for that, but I was just afraid that she could turn on me in an instant and be like, you're the devil or something like that and then get violent or anything. So I turned around and I didn't want to, but I went back to the car just to be like, oh, bye. I was like, did I forget something? Did I miss my keys or my phone. So I went back to the car and she gave me her number and she was like, text me this number whenever you can, because when I win this court case, I'm going to bring you on with me and we're going to support each other and we're going to have finances and it's going to be great. I took down the number. Obviously I didn't text it, but the last thing she said to me was that angels are everywhere. She was like, the angels are the clouds in the sky, just so you know. And then I thanked her. I said goodbye and she drove away. And you guys, I have never had more mixed emotions in my entire life. I, in, I, I made a vlog. I, I'm vlogging on in November and I even addressed this. Obviously, I had no one to text or call. The only person that I could call was the guy that I had just gone on the date with because I knew he was awake. Um, so I called him and I was like, should I report her? I don't, I don't know what to do. Um, but I decided not to just because I was never truly in any danger. And I don't know if she relied on driving as her income and I didn't want to report her and cause any issues or anything like that. But yeah, um, I ended up going to bed and that was the weirdest driving experience I've honestly ever had in my entire life. I didn't know how to handle it. It was strange. It was eerie. It was bizarre. And I'm not making this video to make fun of mental illness or poke fun at it. It's just a crazy story that happened to me as a gay man in LA, as a gay man who felt very uncomfortable in a super religious environment. So just a heads up, you guys, be careful where you're, where you are in, I, I oftentimes think like, oh, it's LA, everything's safe, but not everything is. Some people are still homophobic. Some people do carry very old school beliefs that are rooted in gender norms of the fifties and the forties. So just keep an eye out, be aware of things and yeah, just be cautious. So yeah, there is no silver lining to this story. There's no resolution. It's just, that was the story. So comment below with your thoughts. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Follow me on Twitter at OfficialJackM. Instagram is jmeridu. I will link below last week's video. I did a video with Travis and Mario. Tricario. It was a collab. I played Truth or Dare with my betchy ex-boyfriend. So that'll be linked below. I love you guys so, so much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.